Hello and welcome to the show. Have you ever wondered about air rifles, air guns, what's legal, what's not legal, what to hunt, when to hunt it? Well, I'm joined by Roy and Johnny, and over the duration of this show, we'll hopefully bring you some answers. Welcome, welcome to, to Field Tester. So, Mr. Lupton. Yes, David. Air Rifles, mm -hmm. you actually are responsible for our most popular ever film on lovely, the show. But, so we were at like 6.5 million people that watched it. But you were the one that wanted to make that film mm -hmm. because we hadn't really done a lot with Air Rifles, but you were adamant that film would go. And um, you were clearly right, which pains me massively. But I'm glad it hurts you. Why, <laughs> why did you think that that was an important film? So, for those that don't know, it's hunting, looking at the, the difference between 177 and, and, uh, and 22 and drop off ranges and we had some slow-mo stuff of, of uh, rabbits being taken as well, didn't we? Rabbits and yeah, a, yeah, a little bit of crow hunting on there and bits and bobs as well and some pigeons and what have you. But and I, I think really, I think the whole of the population at one time or another, um, if you've been brought into shooting from a young age, then most of us have been introduced to, to shooting through an air rifle. Um, yeah, I know I, I started off um, shooting an air rifle when I was about seven um, and you know it was it was learning those basic skills um, and the basic field craft from a, a very young age that brought us on and I think that's what yeah we, we all still go back to it we all still reminisce about it and we've, we've all you know, still got that, that passion for it so I think it's because it is something that although we may not be using them as much as we used to we still enjoy, you know, we still enjoy it and we still hark, you know, enjoy going back and harking back to what we used to do if we're not currently using them. But you say harking back, you have some very nice air rifles, oh, which you use on lovely a... Lovely shinies, yes. On a daily... But, I mean, no, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I still... I still it's not a nostalgic rifles. thing. No, 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 no really. I mean, not for me, but I mean, a lot of people don't. But yeah, I mean, for me, I still use an air rifle pretty much every day. Um, yeah, that's just where I find myself and, and what we're doing at the moment. So, yeah, we, we're, we're shooting... Um, feral pigeons and rats and whatever else so you know there's always always an air rifle handy to to go out and um, and have a play but again, obviously i mean the evolution that that i've seen in my lifetime um since yeah using an old break barrel wire arc um or i think my my first one my first air rifle was a, a 177 diana was it um original um but yeah i mean the, the evolution has just been phenomenal now um to to, to the kit that we're using um, and you know, you'd have never dreamed. I mean, it's uh, it's almost like something out of a sci-fi film. You know, the the kit that we're using now compared to what we used to use as kids. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, the principles are still exactly the same. Johnny, where did you start? It's a very much the same story as Roy, really. So yeah. Can I start? So, That's great. Break yeah, barrels. <clears throat> yeah. Could you break the barrel? Were well, you a seven-year-old? Were you able to break the barrel? Uh, uh, yeah, but there was some weird and wonderful sort of gymnastic movement that I had to do. Right? <laughs> no, like, That's it. You, you, you used to have, to have to use a lot of yeah, leverage, yeah, didn't yeah. you? I can remember my Running dad... against the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. something like that, having a big run-up at it. It helps being a fat kid. Can I just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I had a yeah, similar story. I sort of st started at the same age as, as Roy, and my dad had a uh, same rifle as well. He had a, a Diana Model yeah, 22, yeah, yeah. and it was upstairs in the attic. And I used to climb up into the attic whenever he'd go and get something out of it, and this gun would be as big as me, and I'd say, can, can I have a go? And he'd say, no, no, <laughs> no you can't, it's bigger than you. And then one day he did, you know, when I was of age, and, and then started from there, really. And, yeah, I still, I've got into lots of other shooting, but I sort of cut my teeth on air rifles, and I enjoy, still use one, and enjoy going back there. It is, there's, you know, element of nostalgia behind it, but... But we can't, are you talking about the evolution, we can't ignore these now you've brought these along and we're getting and uh, we'll see johnny shooting these in a little bit but you know it hasn't really changed i mean when when what's this date from that's uh, uh 1907 bsa um so this is a bit of a collection of mine and uh we'll start we'll start up here with the oldest and then work our way down so this is a an original oscar bugle spanel sp uh, i can't even say Go it on. bugle, bugle spanel rifle from um dating this is looking like i reckon anywhere from 1885 to 1900 for this rifle it's a smooth bore gallery rifle still works say the name again for me i missed it it's time. an original oscar bugle spanner rifle 
Um, you can tell a lot by a rifle as it goes off, the noise it makes as to whether really? it's going to, yeah, 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 as to whether it's going to be any good or not. Um, you know, mm. if, 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 the, if the piston and the spring guide in there has all been machined up correctly, it's going to have a, you know, a nice crisp uh, throw on the, on the piston and as the spring expands, whereas if you've got something that's cheap, nast, nasty, yeah, it tends to twang and vibrate all over the place. There you awesome. go. Awesome. So what's the next? Right, next one is, uh, this is, yeah, a bit of a rarity. This is a, um, a Lincoln Jeffrey's BSA L model, so it's a lightweight model. Um, and this is 1907, this gun. Um, it's a bit different with this sort of spoon shape on the cocking lever that you see here. When, when do you see another one of these? So something that's never going to get sold. Mm. Um, and that, that's a 177, that shoots beautifully, yeah. You know, I love looking at these. You think that, that, that whole thing was made by hand. There's not a machine in sight. Everything there is going to be fettled and done by hand. Uh, and then at the bottom here, we have a, a BSA Air Sporter. And this is actually my dad's rifle, and I went and stole it off him yesterday. Um, and there's a bit of a story behind this. So he, as a as a boy, he he could never afford a BSA Air Sporter, and it was the rifle that he always wanted. And he was telling me when he was big into his air off was when he was 14 years of age. So I worked it out that I'd need a, a 1954 model, which would be the year that he was 14. Uh, and I found this one for him and got it in for Christmas and he was made up, bless him, so yeah. Um, I went and pinched it last night and I might just not give it him back, actually. This, my dad tells me, this was the tool to have. He had a couple of Diana um, rifles, a Model 22 and a Model 25 that I inherited, but this was always the better rifle. And um, yeah, very, very famous gun. Now, Tim's been rummaging around his gun cabinet and has found something that he thinks is of historical significance. All right. So if you wouldn't mind having a look at that. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Well, Johnny, I just route around my farm workshop, so I actually found this, which I forgot all about, but I don't know how old it is. It's been in the family for, for generations. Right. <laughs> Not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wonder <laughs> what you think of that is. Look at that. It's been fantastically well looked after as well, I like, like to see. Uh, that is, um, that is an old 1990s air arms, side lever, spring, operated air rifle um, with a Seagull 4x28 Chinese scope on top of it with a set of mounts. Did that colour would have come with it? Um, pass. Don't know. Free cobwebs yeah. come with it as well. Um, what colour was that? Can you see? 2-2. Two -two. That looks like a 2-2. Two -two. The tap still works Tim. <laughs> Pellet goes in, close it up, that lines it up in, in line with your barrel and it's a side lever cocking action on here. So that's the lock there. I think that's a bit broken, but that would lock that on there. You open up the side and then give that a pull round and then you're going to draw the piston down the cylinder and compress the mainspring. I just wonder if, you know, I just wonder if we can actually get that back to a nice blued finish, do you think? Or not uh, past it really? Uh, no, I think you could probably do that. Um, probably need the rest of the year to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not worth a lot of money then? Unfortunately not. So it's not a thing I should take to Antiques Roadshow? Uh, no, oh, I probably, uh, no, so this is not going to, this is not your retirement fund I'm afraid mate, this one. <laughs> Will it shoot Johnny? Uh, <coughs> I'd probably say not, but I reckon we should try it. Great, now, we've got a load of air now we've got a loaded air rifle and there's no way of discharging it. <laughs> Anyway, that's enough. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're you obviously getting a lot of clients through um, R&K Stockcraft. Mm -hmm. What would you say the division would be between sort of springers and PCPs now? I'd say most people, are, yeah, it's it used to be just spring rifles, spring rifles, spring rifles, and then over the years, I'm going back to a couple of decades now, and then. You know, as, as, as time's gone, the tables have turned and most people are into the sort of the serious air rifle pre-charged stuff now. We still sell springers, good quality springers. Should you jump straight, if you're getting into air rifling, should you start with a PCP or should you, I'm even asking this question, I think I probably know the answer, but you know, would you suggest that they go start with a springer before going to a, a PCP? Depending on, on, on who you are and what you want to do, I think as a youngster, I definitely, and they're getting into shooting, I'd be inclined to put them on, on a spring rifle and then move them up afterwards. Open sights, 
on a spring rifle, shoot it as it is, and then when you put the scope on it, you give them and, and they learn the benefit of optics. Uh, and then when you move into pre-charge and you lose the recoil of a spring rifle and your accuracy becomes very, very easy to achieve. I think, I think that's the thing. I think that was one point I just wanted to, to highlight there. And I think from somebody starting out, I think they'll benefit more from learning to shoot with a brake barrel or you yeah. know, from, uh, from a spring air rifle than, than a PCP yeah. because you have got to learn to hold it. You've got to learn to shoot it, haven't you? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, there, there is a technique to it. And I, th I think that does benefit you as you Definitely. as you go further, get, you know, going down the line. To be a really good shot with, the air, with an air rifle like out in the field, a sub 12 foot pounder, you've, you've got to have one of many things. You've, you, your distance judgment's got to be excellent because you've got such a loop on your trajectory. Your shot placement's got to be excellent as well. Whatever you're shooting, if you're shooting um, vermin, you've got to put it in the right spot. Wind is a massive issue. Like if there's a breath of wind, it can push an air rifle pellet from, you know, push it a long, long way away. So you, your field craft has to be excellent. You have all these, all these fundamental parts of shooting that you have to <laughs> the crush into to get it right and become a good shot with an air rifle. And I think if you can, if you can achieve that, it forms the foundation of being an excellent shot as you move up into rim fire, into centre fire, you have to manage the recoil on these guns as the pellets in transition down the barrel. The pre-charge stuff, there is no movement in the gun during the, during the firing cycle. So you do have to be, to get really accurate with a Springer, yeah, you've, you've got to be, you've got to be good. You've got to be good. Polo, David. That's it. Oh, 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 you missed that one. That was a waste, wasn't it? There you go. That's a 2-2. Two -two. So this is something that you used to practice as a child, isn't it? Uh, yes, I've done what, this. Super gluing polos to people? Super gluing polos to people, just for giggles. So we're going to try, right, and shoot through the middle of this polo. How am I going to know you've gone through it? You're not, I'm going to shoot to the side and claim that I've done it and you'll be none the wiser. Okay. <laughs> How will you know I've done it? I'll tell you what I could do, actually, to make this a fair test. I need something behind it, Johnny. Yeah, all right, fair enough. You win. All right, well, if I... Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll go and get the hammer and I'll put this target board behind it. Perfect. So you can see. And you can see if I'm cheating or not. How does that sound? Yeah. So this is your part of your misspent youth, was it? This is part of my misspent youth. Lego men or polos in the garden. Nothing better. Right, here we go. Oh. oh, you! We should have sucked them a bit. Oh. Right, I'm going to go for the one on the left hand side now. <laughs> oh my god, it's so close! I'm going to go back to the first one. Oh, what? Now, you still be able to see the pellet. Um, hang on. That's your, that's your lucky, lucky polo, is it? Oh! It would appear so. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what we'll oh. do now. See if we can do it with the 2-2. Less room for error. Right, we'll go for it. Oh, that were close. And another one. Last one, Johnny. Hang on, I'll run out of pellets. No, oh, that was not minty fresh. I'm really disappointed now. Never mind. It's all right, he's got something to build on. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think I'll, um, yeah, spend some more time doing this in the spare time I have available. <laughs> <laughs> How much time did you dedicate to your shooting then? I remember you talking about trying to shoot the tips off matchsticks or something? Or yeah, we used to put matchsticks out. I also used to put... Um... <laughs> you were smirking, what? <laughs> oh. no, was... <laughs> I also used to shoot um, primers on shotgun cartridges. Oh, um, but no, 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 if you cut, if you cut the, the shotgun cartridge off, yeah. then you can just put the, 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 um, the, the primer out there. What? No, we can talk about this. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> So as I say, if you if you cut that off, you can shoot those. But again, I mean, it was just it was just messing about. But again, we used to do a lot of a lot of shooting. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, back then, I mean, growing up, I always had ferrets and I used to feed my ferrets by shooting starlings and sparrows. Um, so yeah, we used to go, used to go up to the local farm um, and we used to shoot starlings and sparrows around the, the corn bins, around the corn silos. Um, and, and then, I mean, obviously, you know, we haven't, we wouldn't, you know, wouldn't dare dream thinking of doing that now because we just haven't got the, 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 the numbers, you know, they're not, they're not in the pest proportions that they were then. But yeah, that, that it, we were constantly shooting. Um, yeah, that, that was, that was what we did. That's another evolution of where we are with certainly air gun hunting, I suppose, is where the quarries. Oh, massively, quarries you know, shape. massively. You've got to be, you know, now, um, you know, from, from a hunting perspective, you need to be so much more aware of the laws that are involved because you can trip yourself up. You need to understand about the general licensing. You need to understand, you know, what you can shoot, how you can shoot it, where you can shoot it, if you can shoot it. Um, so yeah, for, for youngsters coming into it now, it's, it's a lot more onerous. Yeah. Well, it is getting quite complicated as to what you can and can't shoot, but Charlie's actually pulled together this uh, public information film. So people are a bit more aware about what they can and can't. What can you shoot with your air gun in your back garden in the UK? It's a garden, it's a private premises where you have permission and you are happy with your backstop and that backstop is in your garden. What birds can you shoot? We'll come to those in a moment. Pest animals? Yes. Grey squirrels, rats, rabbits are fine to shoot as are stoats and mink. Don't forget the age rules in the UK. Under 14 years you can borrow a sub 12 foot pound air gun, that's most of them, and you have to shoot under supervision. 14 to 17 years old you can borrow an air gun and shoot without supervision. 18 and over you can own your own air gun. In Scotland you have to have an air weapon certificate if you want to shoot unsupervised. In Northern Ireland, if you're shooting unsupervised, that supervisor has to be aged 21 or over. Pest birds, can you shoot them? Oh my goodness, this is where it gets complicated. There used to be a list of birds you can't shoot. Then the government almost accidentally banned all bird shooting, so they had to rush out a new list of now 20 birds you can shoot. It's a list we call the general licenses. Let's start with doves and pigeons. You can shoot wood pigeons and feral pigeons all over the UK. You can't shoot stock doves, collar doves or turtle doves. Wood pigeons make good eating, but you can't shoot one to eat it. And if someone questions you, you have to show that you are preventing serious damage to crops. Here's a crop. Or foodstuffs for livestock. Here's some food stuff. Plus, it's worth being able to produce a scarecrow to show you have tried other means. Seriously. How about corvids? You can shoot carrion crows and magpies all over the UK. Hooded crows only in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Jackdaws in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, but not England. Jays, England, Scotland and Wales, but not Northern Ireland. Rooks, England, Scotland and Northern Ireland, but not Wales. And Indian house crows only in England. In Scotland only, you can shoot great ag geese. In England, you can shoot ringneck parakeets, but not monk parakeets. And in Northern Ireland only, you can shoot starlings. For a full list, go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash gl. Can you shoot a duck, pheasant, partridge or grouse in your back garden? Yes, you can, but you probably live next to a shoot, so your local gamekeeper won't love you. You are now up to date. Good shooting. OK, so I hope that uh, makes it crystal clear. Thank you very much to Mr Jacoby for putting that together. So staying with hunting and staying with quarry, um, Roy, your favourite quarry with, a, with an air rifle. What do, you, um, what do you enjoy hunting? What do you enjoy eating? Satay squirrel is absolutely delightful, but no, uh, particularly the nuts. But no, the, um, as I say, satay, satay squirrel is really, really good, but it, you're right. Yes, you, you enjoyed them as a delicacy, didn't you? Yes. Oh, we didn't squirrel so. oysters, there's we nothing, did, nothing did, like we them. Have, we didn't have squirrel no, oysters. No, you didn't eat, you didn't eat the oysters. But, uh, I could have told you you did, you wouldn't have minded. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously I used to shoot a lot of rabbits as well, um, and again, yeah, feeding ourselves, feeding dogs, feeding ferrets. Um, and I think rabbits were bread and butter for learning stalking skills. I think with the, the disappearing rabbit populations that we're seeing in this country at the moment, um, unfortunately, I think it, it does make it a lot more difficult for um, the youngsters learning those skills um, to get into it and, and be offered the same opportunity. So, you know, now I think the only way that you can supplement that is by getting out and, and using different um, targets. I mean, you've got a lot of different targets now. You've got the, um, obviously the shoot and see targets. So it's a lot more obvious where your, your pellets are going. Um, you've also got the reactive targets as well. Um, and I, th I think that's, you know, that's part of it. So from the shooting perspective, you can, you can enhance the experience a lot more, but how you recreate the fundamentals of the stalking side of it is, uh, is I think gonna be a little bit lacking for the generations coming on. 
yeah, I mean, we played with a few of the, the targets that Jack Pike sent us through, actually, and they, they were a lot of fun. And you were, mm -hmm. you know, but it is nice to see that and, you know, get yeah, an yeah. idea about where you are. But, so what about you, Johnny, as far as quarry, what was your favourite thing? Same again, same again. Rabbits, definitely, um, yeah, as a, as a kid. Dwindling numbers around you at the moment? Uh, not so many, yeah, definitely in the last, <laughs> I'd say, the last 15 years, I've seen a massive, massive difference around me. With the loss of the, of the rabbits, then, what else are you hunting or enjoying hunting? Again, I mean, the squirrels. The squirrels have got to be the go-to now. Um, again, they're a, a very tricky quarry. Um, you, they, in certain areas, they can be very aware um, and they can be very, very difficult to get onto, especially with the, the expansion of um, the grey squirrel populations. You know, not only is it a fantastic quarry, but you are doing conservation, or you know, it has got massive conservation benefits as well. Um, because obviously, you know, with, with a huge burdening population of squirrels in a woodland, then it is going to affect all the, the nesting birds, etc. as well, because they, you know, they will predate on eggs, they will predate on chicks. So they're not, they're not just nut munchers. They will um, eat or they will take advantage of, of any protein out there. I think it was when we were filming, I think it was last winter, Roy, and we were looking, you had FX impact, you had thermal on top, but it was the, I think it, what sort of struck me was when you said that the squirrels that we saw there, we might have seen a dozen squirrels, they will have gone to every single hole, and every single tree, and they will basically have just Definitely cleared the place. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea that they, they are just spending the whole time just going through it. But um, anyway, quick question before I go to the next, next thing. 17722. Uh, Come me, on. For me, 22. 22. 177. Johnny, I've got a brand new air rifle. Yeah. What pellet do I choose? What manufacturer, what size? If you've not bought the rifle from me, I'm going to ask you what rifle you've got. I'm going to ask you what calibre it is and also what your application is, what you're going to use it for. So if you're going to tell me you're going to be shooting vermin shooting or target shooting, really, as I've said before, it's all about accuracy and I can point you in the correct direction of what I think is the best that's out there. So a pellet that we sell most of, that a lot of people come in and ask for, it is by far and away our, our best seller is the Air Arms Diablo Field in 177 and 22. They come in different head sizes, so this is a 4.52, they do a 4.51. One will shoot better in your rifle than t'other. And then there's the 22 Diablo Field and they're in a 5.52 head. You see that on the back there. That pellet in either calibre, there's not really a rifle that I've met that they don't shoot well in. They shoot well in absolutely everything and could be pretty much guaranteed on that. Field target trophy, that's another real good one, 177 and in 22, great pellet. Um, the JSB exact line, they've actually got three different head sizes in 177, so we've got 4.51, 4.52 and 4.53 and again. Um, Why is that important? It's it basically, if you want to take accuracy to the next level, if you're trying to shoot one whole groups at 50 yards, your particular rifle, you may have, this is an Air Arms S410, um, come off the production line in, let's say, January of this year. It's got a batch of barrels on it. This particular rifle with this particular barrel is going to shoot the four five ones at 50 yards better than the other two. They're all going to shoot well, but it might just have the edge with the four five ones. You get another um, exactly the same rifle come off the production line six months later. The tool that's cut the barrels has worn a little bit more. There's a, you know, we're talking minute differences inside the barrel in terms of machining, and you might find that that second one that's come off six months later, that's going to favour the 453s or the 452s. So there's just these variances, but this is getting super, super sort of in-depth, really, when you're looking at this sort of thing. You know, most, of, it, most people that come in, they're happy to shoot within, you know, a half an inch at 30 yards. That's, that's pretty good grouping. And for, for vermin shooters, that's, yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good going as well. So it's where okay. you want to take it level wise, really. Okay, show me some of the others. What have you guys got the Bisley? Why would you choose the Bisley? Bisley Magnum, right, that's a heavyweight pellet. So typically all the others in one, this is 177. The other 177 is typically around about 8.4 grains, most of these. That's a heavyweight pellet. So that's 10.5 grains in weight. So it's substantially heavier. Um, and, and basically a lot of people, it's, it bucks the wind pretty well, this does, with a heavy, heavyweight pellet. Um, and also energy transfer is massive on this, on a Bisley Magnum. It's pretty crazy actually when you look at plaster of Paris ballistic tests of what this can produce. But that's a re yeah, really good pellet. Energy transfer is great on that. 
So you've got the generalist pellet and then you've got the... The more um, specialist. Yeah. So again, like the Hades that we've just shot there with the cutouts on the head. And we just proved that point, you know, for shorter range work, the energy expansion is, is, is greater. It's producing a, a bigger hole through that wax rather than it's sort of standard round nose sister there. So you could say for, you know, short range work, that could be a better bet. As long as your accuracy is still there. That what about the H&N? What about that? H&N, just a really, another good pellet, slightly lighter in weight, 14.66 in 2.2, and they're 8.64, so slightly heavier in 177, slightly lighter than these in 2.2. And just a slightly shorter pellet, but again, they shoot pretty well in pretty much everything. There's, uh, all these pellets that I've got out here, there's n none of these, you put them in any rifle, there's none of them that are, are, are going to be uh, bad pellets at all. They're all really good. This is what we sell most of that you see sitting here. But if I've bought a brand new rifle, I should really be leaving with more than one tin of pellets, shouldn't I? Ideally, yes. It depends on what sort of, where you want to take it in accuracy. If you want to get the best out of it, then yes, you want to be taking four or five tins of pellets, really, and, and having a go with, with each one. Um, they don't do mixer pellets for some of the better brands, and some of some, there are some mixer pellets out there some boxes in fact that's something I should put together really what I usually do if most people come in this is something we do is I'll just get a little bag out and I'll, I'll give you 10 10 of each tin so you can just go and try them if someone's after that sort of level of accuracy then that's something that we do do but you've given me a little business idea there David a little <laughs> pellet mixer tin yeah I'm, I'm rather than rather than just give them away we could start selling them but there you go so what's your favorite pellet shape my favourite pellet shape is a, a lovely little dome head. So um, Diablos, something like that. Mm. So that's what I really like. Okay. Again, just a nice accurate pellet. And uh, Johnny and I were talking as well, with all shooting, it is down to accuracy. Yeah, the, the most important thing is making sure you can hit the spot. If you can hit the spot, then yeah, that's 90% of Regardless the of whether it's got frills on it, it's got cuts in it, it's whatever. Exactly, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all about shot placement. If you, can get, you, you want to make sure you've got the accuracy, the accuracy, as far as I'm concerned, um, with, with all shooting, but especially air rifles. Um, yeah, that is, that is yeah, number same, one same. key. Yeah, totally agree. I think yeah. you got quite upset with me, actually, when I've sort of gone, oh, do you want, and I've, I'm not going to do it now. And I go, hey, you, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, your yeah. pellets. Yeah. Don't rattle your pellets. Yeah. Don't, don't you damage your skirts. Because I remember we did a slow-mo shot on a on a feral in a farmyard and whether it, I didn't know at the time whether you were just saying excuses for your miss but it sort of veered to the, the shot was to the right you said oh the skirt must be bent on that <laughs> yeah you didn't believe me did you <laughs> well like, how would we know <laughs> well, if, if somebody invested in a really good slow-mo camera we would have been able to see it looping away wouldn't we? <laughs> but... no no so but yeah so as far as I mean, we have lots of varieties here. Weight, we talked about a bit about weight in the field, but yep. do you have a particular weight of pellet that you choose? Or, you know, for someone that's coming into this, I'm just sort of concerned because, you know, you sort of like obviously have a lots and lots of choice and it's paring it down to something simple and basic to start with and then, but it's all about, I suppose I'm answering the question for myself here. It's about accuracy, it's about what works in that exactly. In that it's, air it's, rifle. it's the combination of what works in that air rifle and it's exactly the same as a combination of what ammunition works in a, uh, yeah, your rifle and, and it's matching those up so it's it's about going out there and you, yeah at the end of the day there's no harsh or the, sorry there's no harm in that because you want to get out there and you want to play you want to practice so yeah get out there with a load of different pellets get out there with um as many different combinations as you can and see what works well for your air rifle and your shooting um, okay. but again yeah it's just making sure you get that accuracy and before you know I mean, the one thing i would always say to people is before you you squeeze the trigger um at a live animal then make sure that you're proficient and make sure that you're, you know, you're able to hit exactly where you're, you're shooting at. Um, and even though we're dealing with rifles, or sorry, with air rifles, yeah, you've always still got to think about what's behind it. Um, yeah, just, just always, yeah, always worry about your safety. Okay. Lots of air rifles in front of us here. We've got the family of the BSAs. Um, here we've got a Webley Raider, and um, this is supplied by Highland Outdoors, and Ryan Charlton has been talking this one through. So this here, this is the Webley Raider Classic. Now this is Webley's new PCP air rifle. This is the Quantum Shrouded Barrel. So the barrel's shrouded but also threaded half inch UNF at the end. Fill adapter is here. We've got an easily rotatable dust cover to keep the inlet valve nice and clean. Coming along we've got nice stippling on the stock. 
Turkish walnut stock, which has an adjustable butt pad, it comes up and down and left and right as well. Then on the underside, got an integral valve. The trigger is fully adjustable, safety catch on the thumb. The stock is incredibly ergonomic. You can shoot with your thumb up, your thumb around, or your thumb on the side, whichever suits, so you can get to the bolt nice and quickly. Now, one thing that's really interesting on this is the scope rails. The scope rail will accept Picatinny mounts and regular 3.8 dovetail mounts as well. From 177, you're going to get 80 plus shots, and from a 2.2, you're going to get over 100 shots from a small compact air reservoir. And that's to do with Webley's balance valve system that allows it to be incredibly efficient and consistent with its shot count as well. So it's a nice, short, small package, as you can see. It weighs 3.2 kilos for the shrouded model and just over three kilos for the sporter model, which is, has a threaded barrel as well. Uh, these are in the shops. The key thing with Webley is its heritage. So although these are manufactured in Turkey, they're manufactured to British standards and they're designed here at Webley HQ by British weapons engineers. Thank you, Ryan. Now, trying to get hold of air rifles to even do this show was quite difficult because there seems to have been an upward trend in air rifle sales in the UK. You must have felt this, Johnny. Yeah, certainly um, as a result of lockdown one and two, people sort of stayed at home. Um, typically, we see a, a sort of spike in uh, air rifles in the trade in, in uh, sort of springtime, March time. You see things start to lift. People the weather starts to warm up, people want to get outside and do, do a bit of shooting, get in the back garden. Um, and I think this year we definitely saw it pushed up beyond that, so to speak. Um, so yeah, in answer to your question, yes, definitely, definitely. Any trouble with supply and demand at all? Everyone seems to uh, Yeah, it, it has been a bit trickier this year. There's certain people that haven't had stuff. It's just, you know, it, it, air rifles have gone well this year without question. Yeah, yeah. no, it's good. So do you still see parents going out and, and buying air rifles for Christmas presents for their kids? Um, yeah, we do. We have parents sort of come in and they look um, with the intention of buying an air rifle for the kids to have use of. But um, there are sort of laws and parameters have been around for some time against um, sort of the usage of air rifles by kids. So uh, once you're over at the age of 18, you can buy whatever you want to, whenever you want to. That's air rifles um, and ammunition. Uh, 14 to 17, you you can't buy an air rifle. Um, you can't receive one as a gift, but you can borrow one or use one on private land so <coughs> so vastly different you wouldn't from have us been able to up. do anything yeah <laughs> no that's it and, and i think this is a shame i mean you know from from looking looking at it now um compared to the childhood that i had i think that's quite sad because obviously that was a a, a pivotal part in my development those you know those, those yeah those years are um, massively influential on on the path that you take i think um and you, you, your skill base you're learning as well so I think that making you know making these laws more onerous, um, I can see that from the the safety aspect, but you know I can also see, um, unfortunately, another side to it in that you know it, we are, we are seeing more and more restrictions keeping people or, or or guiding people away from learning about sensible use of firearms, um, and I, I think that's that's a very very sort of you know. A little bit daunting and um, a little bit scary, really, because yeah, children children should understand what they are. People should understand what they are. Um, but I think in society, you know, it, it seems to be a trend now that we are um, teaching, you know, the general public as complete idiots and, and not allowing us to learn, not allowing us to to understand. Um, and uh, yeah, I do, I do think that's a real shame. So when you, when people come in and, and ask the same question that that Royce and you did that explainers, they go. I'll leave it, thanks. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's like, yeah, I think it switches like some people off, but you know, there's a there's a lot of people out there that look like yourself and myself, Roy. That are, you know, they're shooters and and they want their kids to go through it. So you you're going to find that information out, and you're still going to carry on and find a way to work it to be able to do that. Because you know, as you're saying, it's important to to pass that on to the next generation. And I think you know, it 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 is important. I think certainly as a as a young lad, given, being given the responsibility of, exactly. of, of, yeah, yeah. of owning an air rifle and being, you know, there you go, be sensible with that, you know, off you go, you've got permission to shoot there. I think that was a, a great thing. It made, you, you know, as a, as a young lad, it made you it feel, it made, it, you know, you feel like a, feel like a man, mm. you know, they've been given that level of responsibility. That's great. So, yeah. Okay. 
Well, if people are looking for gifts this Christmas, then they're a bit less complicated than what we've been talking about. <laughs> then uh, we have this from Ian Hodges. For the shooter in your life, how do you stuff their stockings at Christmas? Ian Hodge of Ian Hodge Field Sports has put together the ideal set of stocking fillers with everything from new tech to timeless classics. So if you want inspiration, watch on. Well, we've got all sorts to fit all sorts of pockets. So we'll start off with the, the clue sun or the clue light, header light, spotlight to go on, on your head. To be honest, at 35 pounds, you might think it's not a stocking filler, but you, you won't be without one once you've got one. It seems so simple to have a torch on your head so you've got two hands free. Best Fox core, uh, 14 pound, slips in your mouth, easy to call. Again, uh, we sell so many of these and it doesn't go wrong. No, something very traditional, oh. rabbit purse net. Now we have a chap in Cornwall who makes these for us. 4.95, so they're not the cheapest, but they're made in this country. They're braided onto the ring. Strong, tough, good net. You can't go wrong with one of them. And finally, Ian Hodge Field Sports gift voucher. So if you don't know what to buy, <laughs> always phone up or you can buy it online give the girls a shout and we can email this over, send it to who you want, or give it to yourself if you want to. <laughs> People come to Ian's shop in Cornwall from all over the UK. You can see Ian's range on his website. His guns are on guntrader.co.uk or just drop in. Well, I hope that provided a few suggestions for you for stocking fillers. We're going to finish off with, uh, with really talking about where these guys are now with their shooting. We've talked a lot about nostalgia and we've talked about starter guns, but you can spend an absolute fortune on an air rifle setup, can't you? I mean, the, we've gone so. out and gone, this is 10,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, no, that's it. You know, it's, as soon as you start putting surreal. bits on it. I mean, do you think that the thermals and the night visions are what's keeping your interest in air rifling or is it the essential parts of the kit now? Where do you sort of... Um... No, I mean, I'd, in no way, shape or form. I mean, yeah, I could still, I could still go out and, um, you know, get great pleasure in, in shooting an air rifle with uh, yeah, a, um, a reasonable optic on it and, um, you yeah, know, still, still get out there and do what I need to do. But obviously now, you yeah, know, we've got older, we've got bigger toys, we've got more expensive toys and we like playing with them. But yeah, it just, it does add a, another aspect to it, but also on the, you know, the other side from a... Um, a pest controlling perspective, um, then having those tools available just opens up another vista. Um, you know, it, it gives you that much more opportunity to to do things. I mean, obviously, because of my involvement with um, birds of prey, wildlife conservation, um, I'm massively against um, rodenticides um, because of the, the secondary poisoning issues. Um, so for me, I would much rather see. Yeah, I'd much rather see somebody going out as, as we do and control their, their rat populations or whatever else by using um, an air rifle and having a thermal on it is so much more effective now than just going out because obviously yeah, the rats learn to, um, or, you know, they, they learn about lamps, they learn about the IR, they can recognise IR on a lot of the, the night visions. Um, so it does make it a lot trickier. But you know, now you've got that kit available, you can go out there and you can be incredibly efficient. Um, and it opens, again, it's just opened up a massive new vista. It's an arms race, right? <laughs> an arms race against the rats, no, most definitely. This is something we played with mm -hmm. uh, down the range, put a, an aim point on it. We did, yeah. How comfortable did you feel with the, uh, the aim point? I felt very comfortable. I couldn't shoot a <laughs> single thing with it. I was <laughs> Felt wonderfully comfortable in the process. So Johnny, red dot sight on an air rifle, first time oh, for you? First time, uh, never done before for me, so this is gonna be very interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an Air Arms S410 22. it's a second hand one that I've acquired. Um, I reckon it's pre-2006, so it's got, I think it's a 2004, I think I dated this one at. Um, 10 shot, self-indexing 22 Air Arms S410. One of my favorite guns, if not the. Um, and I've put it into a form stock, which is very cool. So kind of a, a, a bit of a lick of new life. There are, there are other rifles on the market of a much greater expense with cheap pieces on that are nowhere near as nice as this. So yeah, well impressed. Oh, still behind it. That's a really? long way behind it, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Have we got any pellets left? I think it's... How fast these pellets go? 570 feet per second. Right, okay, fine. All right. 
Better, better, closer? Yeah, 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 yeah. More lead? Yeah. More lead required? <clears throat> So this is an interesting one because we've got an air rifle shooting a pellet at 500 feet per second, right? And I'm used to rifles which we, we, we kind of shoot at two and a half thousand feet per second. So once again, this what's is a bit the of league going to be. What's the league? What is the league going to be? We're not only shooting about 20 meters, but it's just like, <laughs> and of course we can't see where the, the bullet, where the, where the pellet's going. So yeah, we need some slow mo, David, just to find out exactly whereabouts we are on it. But uh, okay. anyway, a bit of fun. Are we actually going to Lots see Lots of snap? averages. We must be able to get one in a minute. No. It's a go, go, go. Are you still missing? Oh, you fucking are! <laughs> <laughs> this could be the whole of the show. <laughs> oh, go on, go on, Johnny. Go on, Johnny. Ah! There's no pellets in the... In the, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing about this is that um, these are quite expensive, apparently. <laughs> but, mean, apparently? But, well, no, yeah. I bought a load of them, but the thing is, we've had several goes, <laughs> so we keep on putting back to the machine all the time because we can't hit them at the moment. You're, you went to the Aimpoint Academy, so I went. I, 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 I'm actually qualified. I'm a qualified idiot, and I've done all the Aimpoint uh, training, and I still can't hit these very well. So well, I've hit a few actually, but uh, yeah, with a full ball rifles, I think it's probably a bit easier. But uh, and this is a great skill, it isn't is. it? It's yeah. Exactly the same principle, really, isn't it? So. Yeah, why not, eh? Yeah, we, we better just check and make sure this air rod can actually break this clay before we uh, go any further. <laughs> yeah, oh, it does. It works. It does break it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! That was six inches lead, that one. Six Four. inches lead? Yeah. Hey, oh, he's, oh on. he's God, found he's it on. now. He's found it oh. now. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> go, on, go on, go on, go on, Johnny. Oh, that's no, you useless man! <laughs> <laughs> go, on, go on, Johnny, go on, Johnny. No! <laughs> <laughs> Epic fail. So, driven rabbit targets with a air gun and an aim point. Maybe there's something in it, Johnny. Maybe not. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Right. We, we have asked on social media for a few questions for these boys. Uh, quick fire round. So, Mr. Jones, fire away. What have we got? Best go. Best go. That's like, I don't know. It's <laughs> a hell of a question. Best scope. Oh, best scope for the money. I think uh, a Hawk 3950, for air rifles, 3950 AO, circa set amounts, 100 quid. Best pellets. Best pellets. Oh, again, depends what you're after, but the, the ones I'm using at the moment are uh, JSB exacts. I've got PCP or brake barrel? Uh, PCP, I think for accuracy. If you want accuracy, depends what you're going to use it for. PCP, I'm going to go. What's the most expensive gun you can get? The most expensive gun you can get? What, air rifle? Air rifle. I don't know, I don't know. Um, ask him. This, this one, Roy, <laughs> which is mine and is currently for sale. <laughs> what is the Rolls Royce of air rifles then? Um, what are day stakes going for? Day stakes, yeah, I suppose all packaged out, you can do a good two and a half grand. Yeah, maybe more if you, maybe well, a lot more if you put a really fancy have scope you, on all the thermals. Have you played with the day stakes? Um, yeah, yeah, I've had play with the day state. Their, their latest guns. I'd like to have a, a, a look. It's almost like the sort of smart rifle, isn't it? I mean, it's just extraordinary. The sort of they've been at the forefront of sort of air rifle technology. I think um, FX are, are really up there now as well. And yeah. you, I was, was going to say, I think FX have really. I mean, they, they, mm. I would have thought. Are you seeing you know, massive sales of the SX, FX? FX things? have gone yeah. very, very well. Yeah. Um, you tend, yeah, I think you know. In terms of the evolution, Day State were definitely pushed pushed design um, of air rifles forward. After the, I mean, there was a lot more um, electronic gizmos and bits yeah. and bobs in those, wasn't there? I mean, I've not I've not used Day States, but I know a lot of guys that were you know sort of singing and dancing, bit of bells and whistles and everything else. Whether or not that gave them any more, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it, the uh, the idea behind it is so like a spring rifle. You probably know this, Roy, but as you pull the trigger, you've got the spring expanding within the gun. The recoil begins to move the gun. The gun flows through its 
basically it's firing cycle and the pellet is moving down the, the barrel because it's such a low velocity projectile the, the gun is actually moving while the pellet is still in transit down the barrel so we've all done it it's very easy to pull a, a shot away yeah. from the target um, and obviously on a pre-charge rifle you haven't got any recoil but we've all done it before you can pull a shot so you pull it and the pellet's still moving down the barrel and you, you just flick the barrel slightly or just feather the muzzle slightly and off it goes so they state looked at that they also looked at basically when you pull the trigger on this gun you've cocked it you've pulled a weight back you've pulled a trigger so basically the, the spring pushes away hits a valve valves open air goes up behind the pellet pellet goes down the barrel and out it goes that takes an amount of time for that to happen yeah they, and day state looked at it and said right if we how can we shorten that time how can we shorten from when you pull the trigger to the pellet leaving the end of the barrel so instead of that being a mechanical movement, they bought in electronics, so micro switch trigger, right. and then they use solenoid operated valve, okay. and the idea is to improve, to, to just reduce the lock time, so to speak, and that pellet gets out quicker, thus improving the accuracy of the rifle. Okay. And wow. do you know what? I think it, I think it works. I do. Well, we're like, going to find uh, out. You know, we will find yeah. out. We're hopefully going to have a day state. It was, unfortunately, we couldn't get one here today, but we will be doing stuff in the very near future. But any more, Aaron, before we go? Yep, just a couple more. Uh, what range do I zero my scope at? Uh, it depends if you're target shooting or hunting. If you're, I'd say if you're hunting, it's the distance you're most often going to be shooting at, I'd say sensibly 25 to 35 yards around that sort of region. And best tips for looking after my rifle? Oil it. Keep it oiled. Wipe it over every single time Mr. you use Pilbeam. it. <laughs> Don't put any oil down inside where the pellet is. Gun will diesel, especially on a spring rifle, it will diesel, which will end up burning your piston head. Um, basically damages the gun internally. Yes, it will go bang and it will become more powerful, which is probably going to send it over the limit, which is legal for a start. But secondly, it's going to actually damage the gun. So all the exterior of the gun. Um, and that's about it, really. They look after themselves, to be fair. If I put more air in my PCP, will it be more powerful? No. It will do exactly the opposite. What you'll actually do is you'll put too much air into the tank and you'll put unnecessary pressure on the, on the seals in the tank, which is quite dangerous, obviously overpowering this. There's enough pressure in there anyway. You want to work to the suggested fill pressure with these guns. But it won't allow the valve inside the gun to open. So what will actually happen is um, the power of the gun will dis decrease. So no, don't last, do that. Last one, which I think we all know the answer to is, can we shoot cats? Unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a dog man as well. And I think on, on that particular bombshell, I think he's probably, I'll get him a coat, uh, he'll get his coat and we'll all leave. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Carry on then. <laughs> I think we better leave. <laughs> Next time we get technical. There's ballistic gel to compare pellets. Johnny maps the trajectory of a 177 and 22. We go FAC and there's tales from the air gun servicing department. Any techniques to so, stop yeah. people doing that? Um, yeah, IQ. <laughs> <laughs>